Step into the intriguing world of deceit, where each twist and turn uncovers another captivating story of cunning and mystery. Throughout history, clever con artists have fascinated and tricked humans. Let's take a trip back to ancient Greece, where the legendary hero Odysseus was celebrated for his cunning strategies that outsmarted mythical creatures and navigated dangerous waters. Odysseus was the king of Ithaca, a small but mighty island in Greece. He was known for his cunning intelligence, bravery, and strategic thinking. When the Trojan War broke out between the Greeks and the Trojans, Odysseus was one of the Greek commanders. The war lasted ten long years, and Odysseus played a crucial role. He was the mastermind behind the idea of the Trojan horse, a giant wooden horse constructed by the Greeks to trick the Trojans into bringing it inside their city walls. Hidden inside the horse were Greek soldiers who later emerged at night and opened the gates for the rest of the Greek army. This ingenious plan led to the downfall of Troy. However, after the war ended, Odysseus faced a long and arduous journey back home to Ithaca. Along the way, he and his men encountered numerous challenges and dangers. One of the most famous episodes of his journey was his encounter with the Cyclops Polychemus, a one-eyed giant who trapped Odysseus and his men in his cave. Through clever tactics, Odysseus managed to blind Polychemus and escape, but incurred the wrath of the Cyclops' father, the sea god Poseidon, in the process. Odysseus and his men faced many other obstacles on their journey home, including encounters with monsters like the Sirens, who lured sailors to their doom with their enchanting songs, and the sorceress Sirs, who turned Odysseus' men into pigs. With his intelligence and courage, Odysseus navigated these challenges and kept his crew safe. Meanwhile, back in Ithaca, Odysseus' wife Penelope and son Telemachus were struggling to fend off suitors who were vying for Penelope's hand in marriage, believing Odysseus to be dead. Penelope remained faithful to her husband, but the situation in Ithaca grew increasingly dire. After ten years of wandering, Odysseus finally reached Ithaca, but his journey was far from over. Disguised as a beggar, he devised a plan to reclaim his kingdom and rid his home of the suitors. With the help of his son Telemachus and a few loyal servants, Odysseus executed his plan, ultimately revealing his true identity and reclaiming his throne. The story of Odysseus, as told in Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey, is not only an epic tale of adventure and heroism, but also a testament to the power of intelligence, cunning, and perseverance in the face of adversity. Odysseus' journey home is a timeless example of the triumph of the human spirit over obstacles and challenges. Now let's fast forward to the Renaissance, a period marked by extraordinary creativity, but also the emergence of cunning tricksters like Gregor McGregor. He was known for his cleverness and ability to persuade people. McGregor devised a bold plan to sell land in a country called Poyais. Here's the catch. Poyais didn't exist. McGregor made it up but he told people it was a beautiful land of opportunity and riches. Many people believed him and invested their money in his scheme. McGregor went to great lengths to make his story seem real. He created maps and pamphlets and even wrote a book about Poyas. He talked convincingly about the land's lush forests, fertile soil, and abundant resources. People were excited about the prospect of owning land in Poyas. They thought they could build new lives and find fortune there. But in reality, there was no land to buy, and McGregor was deceiving them. When some investors traveled to Poyais to see their land, they found nothing but wilderness. It was a harsh reality check. Many lost everything they had invested, and McGregor disappeared with money. McGregor's scheme was one of the most infamous cons of the Renaissance. It showed how easily promises of wealth and adventure could trick people. Even in a time of significant intellectual and artistic advancement, the lure of the unknown could still lead people astray. In the 20th century, he introduced us to some of history's most notorious con artists, whose stories intrigue us. Take Ferdinand Waldo de Mara, also known as the Great Impostor, Ferdinand Waldo de Mara was known for pretending to be someone else. He was born in 1921 in Massachusetts, USA. De Mara was brilliant, but he sometimes needed to follow the rules. During World War II, de Mara joined the army, but soon got bored with the regular duties. Instead, he pretended to be a doctor and started treating wounded soldiers. He did a good job 
and nobody realized he wasn't a doctor. After the war, Demera continued his conning ways. He pretended to be many different people, including a civil engineer, a prison warden, and a monk. He would study a job for a while and then pretend to be an expert. One of Demara's most famous cons happened in the 1950s. He pretended to be a surgeon on a Canadian naval ship. Despite having no medical training, Demara performed surgeries and saved lives. Nobody suspected a thing until the real doctor showed up. Demara's story became famous, and people were amazed by his ability to fool so many people. Some admired his skills, while others were angry at being tricked. In the end, Demara's life was full of ups and downs. He spent time in jail for his cons, but also received praise for his intelligence and daring. Demara passed away in 1982, leaving behind a legacy as one of history's most notorious con artists. But deception isn't limited to financial schemes. Consider Frank Abagnale, whose life inspired the movie Catch Me If You Can. Frank Abagnale was a man who became famous for pretending to be someone else. He was born in 1948 in New York, USA. When Frank was young, his parents divorced, and he started getting into trouble. As a teenager, Frank started conning people. He pretended to be an airline pilot, a doctor, and a lawyer. He would forge documents and use fake identities to fool people into trusting him. One of Frank's biggest cons happened when he pretended to be a Pan Am pilot. He flew all over the world for free, staying in fancy hotels and living a life of luxury. He even cashed fake checks worth millions of dollars. But Frank's luck eventually ran out. The FBI caught up with him when he was just 21 years old. He was arrested and sent to prison for his crimes. While in prison, Frank realized he had made a mistake. He decided to turn his life around and help the FBI catch other con artists. He used his knowledge of scams to teach agents how to spot fake documents and catch criminals. After serving his time, Frank became a security consultant and started his own successful business. He also wrote a book about his life called Catch Me If You Can, which later became a hit movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Frank Abagnale's story is a reminder that even when we make mistakes, we can still turn our lives around and positively impact the world. As we delve into history, it becomes evident that deceit has always been part of human society, with practitioners often staying one step ahead of the law. Yet beyond the excitement of trickery lies a deeper understanding of human nature, the delicate balance between trust and betrayal, honesty and deceit. What motivates individuals to take risks for the thrill of deceiving others? How do they entangle their victims in webs of lies? These questions unveil the complexities of human behavior and the enduring fascination with deception. From Victor Lustig, who was a clever con artist and became famous for selling the Eiffel Tower, he was born in Austria-Hungary in 1890 and became a smooth talker and a master of deception. In the early 20th century, the Eiffel Tower in Paris was relatively new and costly to maintain. Lustig saw an opportunity to make money by tricking people into buying it. He devised a plan to sell the tower to scrap metal dealers, convincing them that the city of Paris was looking to get rid of it due to the high maintenance costs. Lustig conducted his scam with great finesse. He forged official-looking documents and held meetings with the scrap metal dealers, posing as a government official. He assured them that buying the Eiffel Tower would be a lucrative investment, as they could dismantle it and sell the metal for a tidy profit. Surprisingly, one of the scrap metal dealers fell for Lustig's scheme and agreed to purchase the Eiffel Tower. In exchange for a hefty sum, Lustig handed over the forged documents and disappeared with the cash. However, Lustig's scam didn't end there. When he heard that the police were on him, he fled Paris and hid. Despite his daring escapade, Lustig was eventually captured and sent to prison for other crimes. The story of Victor Lustig's sale of the Eiffel Tower became legendary, earning him a reputation as one of the most audacious con artists of all time. His ability to manipulate people through charm and deception is a cautionary tale about the dangers of falling for too good to be true schemes. From online scams to elaborate Ponzi schemes, the world of deceit is vast and ever-evolving. So, embark on this journey through history's most excellent cons and prepare to be enthralled by tales of cunning and mystery that have shaped our world.
In trickery, truth often proves stranger than fiction, blurring the lines between reality and illusion.